Hello everyone, happy Advent to you all. Uh, today in the service, I forgot to turn on this wireless microphone. So uh, when you're watching the service, you couldn't hear the message. So I am recording the message again for those who missed the message today. Today's scripture is from John 17, 20 to 23. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them, even as you loved me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Father God, we look forward to your word and work during Advent, the last month in 2023. Fill our hearts with your word and let them become life and power within, within us. May our faith be strengthened by your word and we love you more. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, we are Christians who believe in God. Uh, strictly speaking, we are people who believe in the Creator God, His Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit sent by Jesus. This is what most Christians, not just we UMC members, believe and confess. What I mean by most is that not every Christian is like that. Additionally, the worship we have every Sunday is approved by the name and blood of Jesus Christ and is offered to God, the Creator, under the guidance and help of the Holy Spirit. Once the Creator God receives our praises and worship, Jesus justifies and legalizes our worship with His precious blood and resurrection. And the Holy Spirit governs and guides the entire process of worship. So I call this, this is the Trinitarian, the Trinitarian principle of worship. Since God is greater and vaster than our thoughts and imaginations, it is never possible to cover Him all in one sermon. The same is true of Jesus and the Holy Spirit and even more so of the Trinity, in which all of them are one. The word and expression Trinity is not found in the Bible. However, since the Bible clearly testifies the Trinity, we need a clear understanding of them. So, how are you all understanding the Trinity God? I mean, the Trinity. How can three become one? And how can one become three? This has been an ever topic of debate among theologians and clergies throughout Christian history since the early church. And is also a mystery that cannot be fully exp explained and satisfy many. I also don't want to use difficult theological and doctrinal terms, expressions, and history from here and there to have you understand the Trinity. For today's sermon is to confirm that we believe in the Trinity God, rather than to fully understand the Trinity God. Besides, I'm not smart enough to explain all the principles and histories. However, 
Since this one thing should not be confused, let me explain for a moment. The biblical and traditional orthodox doctrine of the Trinity is different from modalism, which is commonly misunderstood. What is modalism? This is the understanding of it, which says, just as water comes in three forms, solid, liquid, and gas, but is still the same H2O. One God appeared in three forms in each era, creator, redeemer, and comforter. This is what modalism says. Do you understand? To put it more uh, simply, I am a human called Suyobe, but I am also a son, a father, and a husband. This statement itself is not wrong. However, this doesn't this doesn't mean that. This is the Trinity as spoken of in the Bible and Orthodox theology. The biblical Trinity in which the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one is as follows. This is likened to a family. I, my sons, Johann and Joseph are different persons. A father cannot be a son. A son cannot be a father. And brothers cannot be the same as each other. But we all resemble each other and are one family with the same nature and character. So this is the Trinity I can tell you. So are you with me? So modalism and orthodox trinity doctrine are different from each other like this. Have you ever seen or heard of the Unitarian Church? Although they are the same church and Christians, they deny this trinity and also even deny the divinity of Jesus. They believe that only only the Creator is God. There are many churches in the form of the same Christianity, but have different beliefs and theology around us. And there are also many groups in the name of the church that have completely different beliefs from ours. It is also important to know and discern accurately about pseudo-Christian sects or heretic Christian and all denominations of Christianity. Then do we know what we are believing in as, uh, as Methodists? So do you know what you are believing as, pre as Presbyterian or Baptist? I will preach about them slowly, step by step, but uh, the Bible study in particular is a good opportunity to learn those things intensively. Anyhow, the Trinity is all about God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today, I want to list the seven passages of the Bible that, testifies, that testify the Trinity and briefly explain what meaning they have for our faith and life today. Briefly. First, in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, 26, is the first passage in the Bible that shows the Trinity. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the, the heavens 
and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing and creeps on the earth. When God created the first human, Adam, he said just like this. Also, after the great, great flood, Noah's, Noah's descendants did not disperse throughout the earth, but gathered together, built a tower of, of Babel, and gradually went up to the sky. So, the Trinity God said in chapter 11, verse 7, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will not be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and, and there confuse their language so that they may not understand the one another's speech. So that's why there are many, so many diverse, diverse languages and cultures in the world today. In the Gospel of John, Philip, one of Jesus' disciples, asked Jesus one day to show God his Father to him and the others. Then Jesus answered in chapter 14, 9, Have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who, he who has seen me has seen the Father. How do you say, show us the Father? These words of Jesus emphasize that the Father and the Son have indivisible natures in the Trinity. This also shows that Jesus, as the Son, is the perfect representative of God the Father and has a holy nature that is consistent with His and in John 3.16, 3, 3, this is the most famous word of Jesus that, re, that re, represents our Christianity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. These words express that God the Father sent his only Son, Jesus, to save all mankind from sin, give them eternal life, and show God the Father's sacrificial love for sinners. Here, Jesus emphasized his role as both the Savior and the bridge between God and sinners. Okay, next, in the book of chapter 2, 4, also describes the descendant, I mean, uh, the descent of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost and emphasizes the truth and fact that the power of the Holy Spirit which plays an important role in the lives of believers in Jesus and comes to each other, each person. It says, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The Holy Spirit reminds Christians of the words of Jesus, guides them on the right path, comforts and empowers them according to the word of God the Father, and helps, help, helps them move into a deeper relationship with Him. Additionally, Jesus' great commission Matthew chapter 28, 19 also summarizes the Trinity in which God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are mentioned together in the context of baptism. This passage clearly shows the unity and equality of the three gods in the Trinity. Jesus said, Therefore, go, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lastly, in, in John 17, 20 and 21, which we read today, 
Jesus asks that his disciples and saints become one, just as he and the Father are one. Such Jesus' plea emphasizes the unity and harmony of the, of the Trinity, and also emphasizes the importance of harmony and peace among believers. Jesus said, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. In this way, the Bible clearly testifies that the Trinity God has been present in all human history from the beginning until now. In particular, they help and guide Christians who believe in them to keep their journey, journey of faith as a church on this earth and are still wor working for all peoples in the world to be saved. Today, the message from the Trinity God is clear not only to our human society today, which is divided and conflicting with each other for tens of thousands of reasons, but also to all the churches. It is about becoming one with each other again, pursuing peace through forgiveness and reconciliation, and achieving, achieving oneness and unity despite differences and diversity. For God practiced reconciliation and peace first by sending His Son Jesus to us to forgive and save us. Then, how can we, with different languages, cultures, ideas, and values, harmonize and unite with each other? And why should we all be one? We must acknowledge that we are all sinners before God and truly believe and trust in Jesus, whom God sent to us. And He will make us one in Him. For that is what Jesus prayed to God the Father for. And it is the, and it is the wish of Father God to become one with Him again in Jesus. Only Jesus achieved and completed reconciliation and peace between God and all humans through the cross and resurrection. Only the Holy Spirit testifies that Jesus, who accomplished such a thing, is the only one who can heal the wounds and pain and recover from them caused by division and conflict in all human society. Today, the Trinity God invites and calls all of us to participate in His ministry. Our worship is a response and reaction to God's calling. I hope and expect that this worship service we hold together every Sunday will be a sacred time and gathering to respond to God's invitation to us every day and participate together in His ministry. And I bless our church, and I bless you all to become a responding community that God is pleased with. May the grace and blessings of our Lord God overflow more to all of us who respond to His call, obey, and participate together in His ministry. Amen. Let's pray. God of love, who calls us today, we thank you again, we thank you once again for your word and love. At this time, we bear in mind again that you have invited and called us for reconciliation, peace, and healing in an era overflowing with wounds and pain caused by numerous divisions and conflicts. Just like the harmony, beauty, and unity of the Trinity, 
May we love one another, become one, and live spreading the joy and hope. May your kingdom be built up more beautifully in this community through all of us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening.